Hello everyone, this is the Tone Deaf Monk. I'm very excited to bring you something today that I've had uh, for the last four days and I've been chomping at the bit to tell you about it and I'm really excited. That'll obviously come across. Uh, today I want to share with you the Simgot EM500. I saw this online, I thought they were pretty, I started asking around in our um, review group, um, Canucks Audioholics, if you haven't seen us, uh, check us out on Hi-Fi Guides, and uh, where you'll find all our re written reviews for this as well. So. I saw this online, I reached out to Simgot and um, asked for a sample. I um, haven't really seen it around a lot and I haven't heard it being talked about a lot uh, on any of the older models. And so I just wanted to uh, see what they were about. And I am very glad I did. So uh, Eric Lab in our review group uh, talks highly of his EN1000 Simgot he has loves it it's one of his faves and so I you know it got me really curious um, I'm gonna flip the camera around I'm gonna show you a little bit of and I you know I don't do unboxings um, but I just want to show you these beautiful IMs and I got some comparisons today too so it might be a longer one I apologize definitely worth the watch hold on all right I'm back so here they are in their chromey glory uh, these use a really nice semi recessed socket I love this um, it is a full metal jacket which means these are solid and they feel solid and they look solid uh, they're beautiful um, quite gorgeous if I didn't know the price I would have paid 500 bucks especially after listening to this thing you can see a little screw in there for the uh, one side of the vent the other side of the DD vented is right through there through the nozzle these are unique in the fact that they come with two tuning nozzles. You simply unscrew this. This is the red one that comes on the unit itself when you get it. Inside, I have some pictures that I will post with uh, my written review. You can take a look there. Um, so the red nozzles they give you more of a harmonish curve but kind of harmonish simgot curve the black ones that also come wow these are i got fat fingers and it's still not uh not too hard to put them in so these ones um and you can see the slightly different um filters inside pretty cool uh these ones are they say come towards more of their house sound so on the back of the box there is two curves so kind of nice the red one corresponds to the red nozzles and the blue one to the black nozzles uh, pretty self-explanatory these curves are very I would say very close to how this unit sounds if you know how to read a graph um, the red nozzles add a little bit more mid bass into the mix and this gain for the highs isn't as steep so um, the vocal presence and you can see even here where you get this little dip it changes the sound signature so you're gonna have to try both and see which ones for you uh, personally I went to the red nozzles um, I'm a bit treble sensitive actually either one was fine for me but I'm a bass head so 
that's where I went. Um, and I, and I absolutely adore what happened there. Um, and it was a quite the roller coaster ride actually for me. Uh, so later on, I'll get back more into this as well. So here is the Eco Obsidian OH10s. Uh, ever since uh, Dan from Dan's Audio Reviews called it Obsidian, I've, I'm, I'm obsessed with calling Obsidian. I think they stuck. I love these little meteorites. Uh, it's one set I picked up used that I will never sell. Uh, cloth cable Hakugi. Here is my Sennheiser IE200s I just got in and I bought these ones off of Amazon too. Ended up putting their Hakugi standard MMCX. I bought the Sennheiser one which turned out to be wrong but the MMCX snapped in beautifully. Um, loving it. So if you got an IE200, $20 cable. Anyway, I thought I'd compare those two because these right now, these three are my absolute favorite IEMs and they're all tuned a little differently and uh, they're wonderful in their own right and I reach for them. The cable that comes uh, with the SimGot uh, is decent. Uh, these little uh, tie holders, dump them, get rid of them quite quick because they'll rip your clothes and all that happy jazz. Uh, these little molded ends are nice. They're actually, people don't know this, but they're actually more expensive to do these little molded ends than they are uh, metal end. Just in case you didn't know that. And this is a great little cable. Um, zero tangles for free. That's what you get. Non-balance, unfortunately. Uh, the tips that I used uh, that I found that I like the best they may have cut down a little bit of the bass, but uh, I love what they do to the vocal presence region. And these are the JVC FX9 spiral dots. So um, there you go. Uh, let me flip this around again. There we go, sorry. I don't mind showing you my ugly face, but I, I'm not a fan of vids with, you know, talking with their hands. Uh, it just kind of weirds me out. Anyway, um, I'm going to do... Uh, so let's go back to journey. I My process is... I, first listen now, I, I really was excited. So I threw them in and I, and I wrote down some notes. I was using my Ibasso DX160 with the Cirrus Logic chip. And I loved the way it sounded. I thought it was absolutely terrific. Then I burned them in for three days straight. Yesterday, I threw them in again. And I was listening to them, yeah, again, off the DX160. Today, I did my 33-song playlist that I always use. It's expanding. And uh, I was like, mm, something's, it, my initial impressions, maybe it was just an initial love affair, were fantastic. And then uh, I listened to it off the little shoe, um, Truthier dongle, off of my phone. And uh, I thought that the sound was not nearly as warm as my first impressions, which I really really enjoyed so I let these things burn in again more time really tough um, I put them on some serious volume and with that uh, I put them on and I, I I suspected I knew what it was I like a warmer replay I like a bassier replay Zen's up is my go-to fave my reference and um, I was thinking off of the shoe that it was a bit too vocal too squeaky clean and the female vocals didn't give me that same excitement 
So I suspected uh, that maybe the EM500 for me, remember this is very subjective, uh, that I think it needed a warmer source. So with that in mind, I threw it on uh, two different amps and two different sources. I'm very thankful that I actually have more than one to play around with. I have the uh, Shandling uh, UP5 with the ESS. Um, I have an E1DA SG3. If you've never seen this little dongle, it is the absolute most articulate, squeaky clean, brutally honest little piece I've ever listened to. Works for some pieces and uh, the Shu um, also uses a CS uh, Logic uh, chipset, but the Ibasso is known for just having a hint of warmth. And okay, I figured you know, and they all sounded straight up. Spoiler: I I love this I am. Again, it's one of my now three favorites, and. Um, I threw it on the Gishelli J2 AKM with my topping A90D and the magic came back. Then I threw it on a couple tube amps and there was even more magic. And so if you have a tube amp, I, I, they work for everything. There is some IEMs that are, I would say that they're classified as source sensitive, which to me translates to if you don't have this particular sounding source, it will sound like scat. Where the EA500 sounded very good with every single source. And with warmer sources, it got closer to my personal preference. To me, this means that the driver that they use in the EA500 is extremely high quality. If it can articulate and pick up the nuances in your sources, that's a very rare thing and it does it extremely well. Um, do I believe you need to pair this thing with something? No, I don't. I think it'll sound fantastic what, for whatever you choose to use. I am in a really happy place with either a tube amp um, or the Gishelli with the topping. Um, sounds terrific. Power wasn't really an issue either. Uh, it worked low volumes, high power, low power, high gain, low gain. Sounded better on low gain to me. Um, so the next stay, I think I, I, I am going to talk about, uh, sometimes I just sum it up, but I'm just going to go over some songs and my playlist is going to, it's in my written one and I'll, I'll try to post my playlist in the comments of the video. So I want to say thank you again for SimGot for providing this and giving me this opportunity to share with you. Um, I, uh, it's like 90 bucks that I've seen this thing and I've seen it now released on sale. So um, there you be. I love my female vocals and I love, I love my, all my vocals and I love bass. The curve that I showed you earlier, you can see that this is not a bass monster and it is not a bass head I am. Uh, it is also not a treble head I am. I think if I were to classify the EA500, I would classify it as a balanced, neutral, harmonish tune I am, whatever the hell that means. I'm just going to share my impressions. So when I do my notes for the tracks that I'm listening to, the same tracks, I am trying to pick apart the I am. I'm not trying to be mushy and gushy and and uh, try to find all the good things. That's in my synapses. I'm just trying to listen to the I am. And I've got to tell you something. I tried this last night 
and I was chatting back and forth with uh, Bennett uh, in our group, and we were talking about different uh, jazz that he was uh, recommending, and, and I started listening to it, and I just zoned out. That hasn't happened to me in a very long time. I review a lot of stuff. I listen to a lot of stuff. We share a lot of stuff between our group, right? So I've got four IEMs that are from Eric, and then I pass them along, and, and we all share. So we have a really good chance and a, of listening to different things. So I zoned out listening to these things, and I put down my paperwork, and I got lost in the music. That is a really powerful thing to say. These IAMs will make you lose yourself in the music. You will stop forgetting you're listening to something stuck in your ears and you will just sit back and enjoy the music. You can stop watching this video now if that's something you're interested in and these will do that for you for under 100 bucks. My impressions per song because I think it's important to share. Holly McNarland, uh, her vocals, um, beautiful blue, crisp. Uh, she should have an edge to her voice. Uh, on the ESS and the Serious Logic, I did find her vocals a bit thin. With the AKM, Gishelli, uh, then it added back in what I, I love. It, 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 I'm not going to call these warm IEMs at all. Uh, if in fact they would be a bit vocal forward in the mix with enough bass to make you happy but in the bass wise for the EA500 it really is if there's bass in the mix in the track it will bring it up if there's not it's not going to force it out it's not going to add anything um, that's what I call more of a neutral I am um, her, I wrote her, her voice was perfect. And again, it may have been thin on, uh, a more resolving, um, brighter source, but I just loved what happened when I put it on a warmer source. So something to keep in mind. The rest of my impressions are now done with, I did my full playlist with pretty much every source I had. I've spent... 12 hours plus, not the zone out time, but just that critiquing on different sources to get where I am. And like I said in my previous videos, I will tip roll, cable roll to bring out the best I think that these can do and then give you my impressions. So uh, Tracy Chapman, track number two, um, it's the way it's recorded, uh, the strums and the guitar, uh, I've seen Miss Chapman live. I think I know what her voice sounds like. So in my mind, I try to remember. Um, I'm pretty sure I was spit on from her singing. That's how close. She's also a very cool person uh, and likes beer. Uh, fun fact there. Uh, guitar was bang on vocal perfect. Tons of air. These things don't. The EA500, I'll tell you straight up, does not sound like a grass. It has more bass than you think it would, and it has more treble and extension than the graph shows. Um, and air. It's a really unique, special IAM, I think. The vocals in this track, uh, in a lot of IAMs, you can't hear it. And it and this the EA500 brought it out, and I and I, I had a big grin. Uh, Paradox, uh, M-E-B is the artist great female vocals again uh i'm listening for accurate piano at 11 seconds and bass hits at 28 and vocals again at two minutes um my notes were bass hits are fast um nice delay so when the the weight of the bass hits when it it has a nice decay where uh, the bass is still fast but has note weight and i like that replay it was very nice 
Um, accurate piano, uh, double check marks at piano and bass hits again were present, so it did it really well. Uh, Rock Me, 1980 something, doesn't matter, the 80s were great. Um, the bass guitar does it, it goes down again. Um, I really enjoyed this, um, with the tubes because I the tube amps bring a little bit more of the bottom end in the mid bass, and I really enjoyed that it had the right dum 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 dum, right? Um, very good stage and fast hits. So, not only does it, it play a nice mid bass with nice decay. It actually is pretty quick, the driver itself. This is a great little driver. I don't know what's in it, but it's pretty fabulous. Uh, later, we'll get into the comparisons of the OH-10 and the IE-200. Um, Wheat Kings, Tragically Hip. Uh, this is where I was getting now a sense of the stage um, and what the EA-500 is all about. Every IEM for me, I, I love... I'm a... I don't even know how I would describe myself when it comes to stage um, particular. I don't know. I, I like how IEMs present themselves. The EA200, uh, IE200, sorry, Sunny, does it in it one way. The OH10 does it another way. My uh, EJ07 does it a completely different way. And I'll explain how this does. But I was getting a sense of the stage of the EA500. And and after, what, five songs in, I, I kind of, like, knew that this IM has a really cool 3D stage. A very nice extension in the highs. Lots of wicked vocals uh, and guitar details. More so than you would think, uh, especially the, the curve that I chose. Uh, next one, some uh, chemical mentalist from the Crystal Meth. Uh, I love the hits. I, I just, you know, so sweet with this track, go so loud. Um, I think if if you listen to this kind of music, you are actually, you know what? I'm gonna go backtrack on that. I don't think there is a music genre that the EA500 isn't very good at. There you go. I said it. Um, it's time. Labyrinth, see you, Diplo. If you haven't listened to this track, it's very different. Three different singers. I use it. It's a cool track. Uh, higher volumes. Uh, a lot of ED, uh, IEMs I listen to get really sibilant, and they can't bring out. You don't hear the background singers. You don't hear the the uh, when when all the singers are singing together. It gets muddled together. Um, the, the depth, um, the left singer on one of the tracks comes forward, um, and it gets washed out. Uh, it, it was very nice. The piano didn't get washed out. The vocals at two minutes 30, and I wrote in my notes, should blow your mind. My, I wrote and circled triple ex exclamation mark. It gave me the chills. That's really cool. Uh, all my friends are here. Joe Satriani, uh, my favorite guitarist. Um, in his track, he describes this song as a rock guitarist trying to control a wild beast. It had massive width in this track. Great depth, actually, too. Uh, so here you can hear the... Uh, in his mix, he mixed it with him playing uh, in the center, but it's back, and then there's a left and right mixed in, and it's more forward, and you can hear that, and that was cool. Um, and the other part in this track, there is a very hard to play on guitar, a descending A major, and on a lot of E I. I IEMs, you can hear the descending notes. You don't hear it. It's, and you miss it. And once you hear it in a track and you know what you're listening for, you're, you're, you are listening for that and how it replays. And that's why I use the same tracks 
typically I'm changing up a little bit. Uh, number nine, the antidote isn't poison. Go, go penguins. I'm going to speed up here. Very 3D plucks uh, in the air are nice. Uh, bass is surprisingly present. And I think that's because it's in the mix and the EA500 brings it out. Uh, oh, here's one that isn't going to do well, which is uh, number 10, Angel Massive Attack. This is, a, uh, at least I thought it wasn't going to do well. Uh, and it did really well in the tube uh, and the AKM. Um, it doesn't go super low. It doesn't have the super drones that you can hear. Um, on the super articulating DAX, the ESS, on the Gishelli, it went really nice texture. Really nice texture. And you could hear it, the, the, the weight of the bass. It wasn't as, it wasn't like OH-10 level boom, but it was beautiful for what it did do. Really good presentation, phenomenal vocals. Uh, Melissa Etheridge, another one of my female vocal faves, uh, guitar, bass beginning. I wrote, oh my God, vocals. Uh, Annie Lennox, another one, uh, amazing extension and sparkle. It was, um, and now I was getting a sense of it's the EA 500's dynamics, micro dynamics, which are the ability to do, you know, bring in high uh, motion to the particular section of what you're listening to in a passage and um, how well it did that. And macro dynamics is in the overall replay of the song. What kind of motion did it uh, did it did it bring out did it really well um, Holly McNarland uh, very well done again female vocals uh, Shape of My Heart from Sting so now we're getting into some very tough male vocals uh, the pulls were, were so nice uh, perfect as was Sting's voice so uh, the Tea Party now a little um, Seattle grunge um Wishing you would stay with Holly McNarland again. And in this track, uh, if you're listening to it properly, both vocals, it's a very hard track to reproduce properly. Lots of things going on. It's a rock song. And uh, his vocals and her vocals a lot of times aren't. Either one sounds good or the other one doesn't sound good. Um, and it has to do with that mid bass and how it replays that and how much of the of the drivers are doing that into the frequency range and it and it did it wicked uh, huge dynamics uh, in every song uh, that I've listened to so far the EA 500 brought it out with passion uh, emotion uh, instilled into the music and I circled um, you know, 15 songs into my playlist, third round, and I wrote musical. That is one good way to describe the EA 500. Uh, Avenue A, Tom Cochran. So in live recordings, you know, I'm listening for, can I hear the venue? Can I, you know, if I remember and I've been to, you know, stadium in a concert, does it sound like I am there or am I in a studio? Where am I? How big is the stage? How natural it is? Um, and I wrote big stage, so natural, like you're in the middle of the concert hall, a hundred feet from Tom Cochran. Um, and I wrote also strings at a minute 30 are so nice. So I'll get to, so uh, next one, uh, Hani Arani, if you haven't uh, seen my videos before. So this is a piano player and she is very unique. She has, uh, it's very intimate, the presentations. So there's multiple microphones and uh, when it, there's one on the keys and there's more than one inside of the piano on the strings. And when she's playing the, when you hit the key, you hit the key and then you hear the resonances from the other mic 
for the strings reverberating inside of the piano. Very hard replay. So a lot of IEMs couldn't get the right weight and they couldn't um, get the piano correct and then hear those details. The EA500 uh, did it all really well. My light's off. That's okay. I'm good. Um, so it played it really well. Piano notes were perfect. Uh, second mic's clearly done. Excellent. Uh, number 18, uh, Summertime, Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, the trumpets. Man, if you listen to a song and you know what the trumpets should sound like and you listen to the EA500, and I just had a big grin because the trumpets came with that just that perfect tonality of the edge, uh, bite and tone. Uh, both of Ella Fitzgerald's vocals and Louis Armstrong, so completely different. Those two are great together. Um, they were great. I mean, they were both done correctly. Uh, Pancho Sanchez, uh, love him. Again, check him out. Uh, trumpets here are, they should sound silky. Good timber, overall mix. Uh, how does it present it? Uh, and of course, uh, Poncho Sanchez is famous for his drums, which he sells on his website. If you like banging on drums. Micro dynamics were huge. Drums also sounded great. That was my notes. Uh, Royal Phil Harmonic Orchestra. I, I know. Uh, they have a whole album with pop music and uh, My Girl. And I found this album. It's recorded really well. And I listened to this for dynamics, excitement, um, how well the loads. I mean, it's very transitional, right? So, I mean, uh, low passages, high passages, it's orchestra. And um, you can hear the xylophone playing better than I have in a long time big stage so now I'm getting back into the stage of this this thing and uh, this stage is on the EA 500 all of it is pretty much inside of your head it is pretty wide has great depth has great height on certain tracks if it's in the mix and it'll bring it out um, I really love the dynamics of this song and the emotion that the EA500 brought into it. Sim got whatever dry rig you're using is mm, nice. Um, it was a great listen. I said I just kept turning up the volume. Probably not good for my ears. Uh, iconic Alanis Morissette. Again, there's my vocals. Uh, it gave me, again, the... Mm, chills it was awesome um i just came from reviewing the uh i've mentally blocked them out the shine the joy audio no amount of gear in the entire cosmos will bring that I am's emotion out. Period. Uh, the EA five hundred did it so incredibly well, um, and the vocals were amazing. At thirty eight seconds, f it's funny listening to the same song over and then just hearing something you've never heard before. And then once I heard it, I had to go back downstairs. I had to listen to it on my Adam Audios, and I went, oh, yeah, it it's there. But I didn't hear it before until I listened to the EA500. Okay? Uh, at 38 seconds, I can hear that she changes the mic position, and I have never heard that before. Uh, the Day That Never Comes, Metallica, live, s and 2. Yeah, again... It, the EA500 managed to present this in a way that I could tell it was in a massive, massive venue uh, with the San Francisco Symphony. 
And if you haven't seen the video, you can tell that the whole symphony is wrapped around the stage and it is so well recorded. Uh, and when vocals come on, you really get that sense of stage. Uh, at 56 seconds, the bass hits were fast. They were very nice. Um, the next one I a track I listened to is Flim and the BBs. And if you get a chance to listen to this track, dial up your volume to like near max and listen to this thing. It's very dynamic. Um, when I used to demonstrate home audio, pro audio speakers, I would sit somebody down and I would literally dial it up and I would make sure that I chose the right source material for the person and what I knew it was going to happen. And my favorite replay uh, with this song used to be from a pair of speakers, uh, the, the biggest ones they made from NHT, now hear this. It had a lot of five inches and it had a lot of low end, and but it hit like a truck. And uh, that's what I'm listening for. Uh, Tricycle, uh, it did it very, very good. Almost perfect, not, not the slam of that NHT speakers, but enough to bring a lot of great emotion and and it was fun. Uh, you can tell at this point that the EA500 suffers from lack of sub extension on certain tracks. It's not there. It's not ever going to be there and it's not going to force it to be there. So um, the tuning of the EA500 isn't going to have massive sub information and that kind of translates into the very lowest of the bass and uh, on tracks like this you could hear its weakness. Was it a weakness if it's not tuned that way? I don't know. Um, but I'm a bass head so I like more of that. But I was still pretty happy with that. Uh, I wouldn't obviously throw these things into my ear if I were to listen to a lot of bass heavy music because I know what they're about. Uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller, man, the, the beginning is sometimes a lot of I am, I find very sibilant. The, 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 at the first 11 seconds in, um, the electronics music of that is like shear my head off. This got really, really close, um, but it didn't push me over the edge. So I was happy for that. And again, the wow factor in the 3D stage was was pretty cool. Uh, Oliver Manzuki, uh, the African musician, big drums, um, uh, lots of uh, lots of details, lots of things going on. Very cool replay, uh, backup singers, um, and I really liked, I liked the vocals actually at the beginning. Again, here you have male vocals and female vocals, and it's hard for IAMs that I find to hit that nice balance, and it, it did really well. Uh, Brothers in Arms, uh, Dire Straits, at the beginning you hear that thunder, and it's really hard to, if you have too much note weight in the bass and sub bass, it sounds funny and it doesn't sound clean and you can't really tell, it's just droney. Uh, it did it really well. Great presentation. Uh, Mark Knopfler's voice was very, very good. Uh, he actually has a husk, husky sound in his vocals in this replay of this song and that was really nice. Uh, another one I now threw into my playlist uh, that I heard the other day was a live version uh, of, uh, I think his name is Niles Lofgren. And he plays acoustical guitar and um, it's an amazing, amazing track. And uh, it, it was mesmerizing how well it did it. And that was some of the what I was listening to the other day when I zoned out. Um, I just got lost in the music. It was so cool. Uh, and I just, you know, uh, I, 
I have a couple more, like Bella Fleck I, I started listening to. The banjo, very cool. Like, how does banjo sound to you? To me, it sounded like a banjo playing on that track. But my last note here for my song lists, um, and I wrote and I circled before I sum up, is just that I said, you know what, uh, that song and that, the way that the uh, EA500 played back just makes you get lost in the music and you forget you're wearing something. That is a huge compliment to Simgot for uh, inexpensive I am. It's not that actually that inexpensive, you know what I mean, but compared to top of the line thousand dollar single dd yeah it, it is uh what you get lastly i'll just summarize kind of my thoughts and then uh quick comparisons to the oh10 and the ie 200s um the stage uh the stage on the ea 500 is not just left and right center it is very 3d but it's kept within your headspace that's the way i can describe it i would also describe the stage as very spacious it had a great sense of you know around here so that probably didn't make any sense um from track number two tracy uh Chapman number three MEB the difference in the depth between the when I listen to track two and track three you could hear the difference of the depth of the singing and that's how I kind of got okay well it this I am actually has a great sense of depth not all the time but in the mix it did uh so if it's in the mix it will brutally honest replay it um the bass, uh, when it's in the mix again, like Go Go Penguins, it has great weight and it's fast. And it has the right note weight, sometimes tubby, sometimes um, quicker, um, and it transitions. Like it, it, I think it replays music the way it was intended to replay the music, not trying to color anything. Uh, I again, uh, I'll say it's not source sensitive. That I would consider it only works on one kind of source. Uh, this one worked well for all kinds. It was very resolving. Um, such a good driver again. Um, and the, that's a huge compliment again because if it can pick out the nuances of different sources, that's a very resolving driver that can do that. Uh, without an EST or a BA or a bone connection or a planar. This is a single dynamic driver, right? Um, on warmer sources, it did add a touch of warmth, and I found then the bass it was perfect for my preferences and my stuff that I listen to. Uh, when I'm not listening, I should say that, when I'm not listening to these 33 tracks, I'm listening to what my mood. Last night with Bennett, it was, you know, jazz. Uh, if I'm jamming out, then it's, you know, Metallica, Tragically Hip, um, live. If I'm in a vocal fix, you know, Lord, um, Halsey, more modern music. Uh, I'm very varied. Uh, classical, um, not as much. Uh, but again, I enjoy orchestral work, like, like that Pops album from the Royal Symphony uh, was very good. The dynamics of the EA500 is very good. It, it just has a natural way, operative word, natural way of presenting the music naturally with excellent dynamics. It creates emotion that uh, makes you get lost in the music. Right, that's that's pretty good. 
I think all genres for me were there was no downside. There was, you know, rock, EDM, vocal, jazz. They all hit my happy place. Um, for for these music, I didn't think there was one that it didn't wouldn't be good for, right? It uh, it wasn't sibilant, it wasn't bright, uh, it wasn't too bassy, but it had bass. Um, I hope that gets you a good sense um, of the EA five hundred. Let's go into flip it around again. You probably all right because you know I love talking with my hands. <laughs> EA 500. Okay, so flashbacks of OH10, the weight, the heft, how it feels in your ear, the comfort. Um, for me, it took a while to get used to the weight of these things. And once I did uh, and put the right cable on it for supporting it, um, I'll never get rid of them. They replay in a way that is, you know, it's it's a special I am. People still buy it. It's been around for years, and it's getting cheaper, and it's fabulous. Uh, let's compare this now, the EA500, to the IE200. I finally got a new cable in that I could put balanced on it. Uh, so if we were comparing these two, stage is more left and right, intimate and closer, uh, and is more studio-like than live versus the 500 goes lower in the sub bass but it doesn't hit as authoritative it's warmer uh, and it's not as forward in the vocal mix that's how i would describe the ie 200 versus the ea 500 singot the oh10 so now it's 1dd and ba uh, wider stage here, but not even remotely close to being as 3D. Has uh, more high frequency energy, more bass, more V shaped, um, more speed, um, more colored sound. I love if you have an OH10 and you read the reviews, I tell you that this has a more colored sound, not as natural as the SimGot. Uh, and definitely less, which is funny because it has the BAs, I didn't find this have as much details. There you go. Uh, the EA500 had uh, overall over these uh, better, more natural vocals. It did have much less sub extension. Uh, but I thought that actually brings out a nicer details in the lower bass and the mid bass and I think that's why it sounded great for male vocals and female vocals. It was definitely more vocal forward in the mix than um, the other two. I found the EA500 definitely very articulate. The, the driver is very resolving and the details are fantastic. It, the EA500 is a quite a technical beast. I lost one. It really is. Uh, so you get this super awesome build. Oh my, there we go. Super awesome build. Oh, you, there you go. You get my face and that at the same time. Um, Build quality, tunability, sound quality, resolving power, price, value, equation. That's it. That's all I got. Um, I'm never going to say I'm going to recommend something or not really, not in this kind of level. You read reviews, you do your research. This is my impression. Thank you. Last look before you go. I want to thank you all for watching my channel. And uh, I much appreciate the likes and subscribes and the love that the community has shown. Uh, apologize for the massively long one. Honestly, the SimGot uh, EA500 deserves this video. Um, I'm not shilling it, but I'm telling you, 
it, it will be a cult classic and especially how it came out with the pricing so it was it doesn't look like it should be at that price and it doesn't certainly sound like it right take price out of the equation what does it do it does things and presentation and the stage in a very natural organic way that makes you get lost in the music done end of story for me thank you much tone deaf monk Audi.